Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more S Super Bar No Link's Awakening in the last episode. God, I've gone a whole 28 episodes without doing that, and of course now I do it. Couldn't quite make it to the end of the series. Anyway, in the last episode, we got most of the way through Turtle Rock and obtained ourselves the mythical, magical Magic Rod. In this episode, we're going to be taking that Magic Rod and going through the last few areas of Turtle Rock that we haven't yet explored. Now, starting off... You can see that the Magic Rod is ridiculously powerful. Easily one of the top three items in the game, if not higher. Um, possibly top two. Possibly most powerful. Um, I'm not really sure of in my books that it really beats the Boomerang, because the Boomerang weakens a lot of things. But right here you can see that Hinox, a boss that once gave us moderate trouble, yeah, he goes down in just two hits from the Magic Rod. Hey. I guess he knocks down. I don't know. I, I couldn't really. I was trying to like think of a pun right there, but I couldn't really come up with one, and it just came out sounding really stupid. Then again, most of my jokes do that anyway. So we're going to use the magic rod on those two uh, torches there that we couldn't use them on before, and we get ourselves a small key. We want to grab this first, just saying. Um, as you might have noticed, the magic rod does not have any sort of magic meter or anything like that. You can pretty much use it unlimited. The only real thing is that there's a bit of a long cooldown before you can use more than two shots on screen at the one time, but really, why would you want more than two shots on screen at one time? It takes down pretty much any regular enemy in one hit. There's not a whole lot I would change about this weapon, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> it's just that dang good. All I'm going to do is go up these stairs, and remember these blocks of ice? Remember the ones where the game took our controls away for a whole five seconds to let me know that ice is cold? Yeah, we need to uh, go up here and we need to do that. So we'll burn those down, and we'll go down, and... You don't need to tell me this again, game! God, some people say Skyward Sword lays it on thing with the tutorials, though, but no. Link's Awakening is the king, man. Takes your controls away from you for five seconds at the very last dungeon in the game to let you know that ice is cold. Yeah. Anyway, cue ball right here. We fought him before. I'm just going to equip my sword and my uh, rock's feather so that I can just jump over him and kind of fight him the easy way. There we go. So he's going to turn around. We hit him again. He turns around. We cannot hurt him with our sword beams, though. So that's just really the only bad thing about this. I believe one more hit will do him in. Yes, we do. Perfect fight. No damage. I'm getting better. I didn't fall. I didn't, I'm getting a little better. I didn't fall in the lava, you know, not doing too bad. It's actually kind of funny. I've had some people tell me that this is not a lava dungeon, and because it's inside of a giant turtle, it makes sense for that to be the turtle's blood. Especially considering that we killed the turtle to get in here, and God, that is... If, I haven't heard a gruesome thought in a long time. That is definitely it, and I think I screwed this up already. Crap. Uh, let me do this again. It's funny because I usually can finagle this, get, getting this right, no matter how much I screw up. It's really weird that I didn't get this right in one try. Okay. So we'll do that. We will do this. We'll go around it. And then we will just finish it off. Okay, there we go. Covered the entire floor. And that gets us our final chest containing, of course, the Nightmare's Key. For once, the boss key is the last thing we obtain in a dungeon. Who would have thought? Whoa, I'm... That was weird. I'm like moonwalk. Look at that. Um, this is what happens when you use a circle pad in a classic game? I don't know. So... All we need to do now is head on off to the boss's lair, which, as you can see, is right over here, but we can't access it. It is on this little island, and of course we know it's against the law to jump over a pit if there are tiles bordering it. So what do you do? Well, we are going to head back to the start of the dungeon. Well, not really the start, but that main hub area where I went to go get the boss key, and yeah, we have an area there that'll take us right to where we need to go. Because if you recall, there was one other staircase where the game took my controls away for five seconds telling me that ice is cold. <sighs> Sorry, I just can't get over that. It just It's one of those things where I, I, I sometimes can't believe that people say that games these days are just too thick with tutorials. And while that's somewhat true, there were plenty of games back in the day that did the same thing where they would just cram something down your throat every time that you didn't do something exactly the way the developers wanted. I don't know. There's even been times like where I've accomplished things like in a special way, like where I've been able to like accomplish like more than what the developers had in mind in an early part of the game, and the game still tells me no, that's wrong. It, it happens quite a bit in older games, but you know, it, it's just one of those things that I think everyone has different preferences on. So we're gonna walk over here. Let's go down, and this will take us to these stairs, which is where we need to go. So how about I burn? This is a block of solid ice. It's very cool. God, 
God! Jeez. I... Ugh. Okay. Let's burn everything here. Okay, no, I need to go up here. No, I need to do this. Okay. Didn't really think it through. I'm pretty much like, I can just burn whatever I feel like, and it probably doesn't matter, though. But nah, after... Oh, shut up! God! Ice is cold. Yes, I get it. You have taken my controls like three times in this video to tell me that ice is cold. I think I understand that ice is cold. Apparently the game doesn't seem to think I understand this, but I assure the game that I do. Come on. No, nothing. Okay. Okay, actually, the solution is quite simple. Just don't destroy these blocks, and then you can kind of just drop into the grotto right there. Which you have more ice... Stop! God! I, I know some people might think that I'm kind of beating a dead horse at this point to continue saying that, you know, it's annoying that it's taking my controls away from me that often. But... It really just doesn't stop. Every time that you touch one of these blocks at all after transitioning screens, it will always, always say it. And it's just, it never, ever stops. It's crazy. So you get rid of those by pointing up. We go down. And that places us right in front of the boss's lair. Now, uh, Rock's Feather and Magic Rod, I recommend you have equipped. How about we step on through, and here we go. Crackle! You're finished. I will never let you play the instruments of the sirens. Meet Hothead. Yeah, they went there. Uh, honestly, seems like a bit of a reused concept from uh, Super Mario Brothers 2, at least. Uh, Hothead, you have to fight fire with fire. You just have to hit him with the flame rod a um, few times over, and he'll be done. Really, mo main way that he's going to be hurting you is by splashing fire on you and by making contact with you, not really anything else. However, you might notice there that... This guy does a lot of damage. And if he hits you with those fire splashes, it's actually even more. He can possibly do four hearts of damage with a single hit if you don't have double defense. So this guy really, really hurts. And if you don't have double defense, he can, well, really, really suck. And wow, I keep falling in lava. You're also limited to kind of just moving in two areas, really. Um, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. Okay, that broke away his shell so we can now see his true form. And I believe just a couple more hits should do him in. Crackle! Why did you come here? If it weren't for you, nothing would have would have to change. You cannot wake the wind fish. Remember, you too are in the dream. Very haunting indeed. Well, there it is. The final instrument of the sirens. on the mountain calls. That does it for Turtle Rock. But now lies the egg of the windfish. And it's quite a dilemma. This island will disappear. We are also in the windfish's dream. What'll that mean for us if we wake up the windfish? Is it really worth it to try to escape this endless childhood in order to possibly see what lies beyond these islands, or possibly end our own lives along with everyone else on this island. Everything on this island will disappear as soon as it is, as soon as we awake the windfish. If you ask me, whatever happens, whatever we do, I think we should head back to Mabe Village and just kind of pay possibly our last goodbyes to whoever we have made friends with there. Because there's been some memorable characters on this island, some very memorable people that we've gotten to know really well. And I think that we should take the time to talk to them all one last time if this really is goodbye. So how about we do that? First off, we have Madame Meow Meow. We helped her get her Bow Wow back. And she says that Bow Wow is proud of his fine fur coat. Nothing really has changed here. After we helped Bow Wow, after we helped her get Bow Wow back, no, not much else. 
This right here being one of my favorite lines that anyone says in Koho Land Island. I love that little chain chomp right there. We have Grandpa Elrira who helped us along the way. He wasn't overly helpful, but there were a few times when he was kind of the guiding light on our journey. Um, how to say, please call outside. It seems that old man Elrira is a shy guy in person. So he's still much too shy to speak to us. Once again, it's unchanged. Dude, you're asking me when we started to live on this island? What do you mean by when? Whoa, the concept just makes my head hurt. Once again, it's unchanged. Nobody in this island seems to have a concept of when. Here's Marin. Thank you for everything. Link, you are the kindest boy I know. One day I made a wish to the windfish. What was the wish? It was... No, it's a secret. One of the very few things that does seem to change in this island is Marin. We'll have to find out what that is. You recall down here? This is where we awoke the flying rooster. He is not here anymore. He disappears for good after the eagle's tower. Many have been asking whatever happened to him, and that is what happened. He's just kind of gone forever. And I suppose the last person here in town I'd really want to talk to is Papal, because he's a fun guy. Oh, wow, he's still doing his pose for calling for help. I've got to say, thanks again. So he appreciates us. At least that's changed. Because they all look alike, even I am sometimes confused. She says, and saying that about her own children, actually, as funny as that is. I suppose there is also Terran, and don't get me wrong that I really, really like Terran. But we kind of just saw one of his best moments where he, unfortunately, interrupted Link's big chance. So I kind of think that Link himself would be kind of bitter with me if we went and go talk to him. Wow, I really interpret these characters strongly. Anyway... Next time on The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, we're going to go wake the windfish. See you guys then.